what a tournament. In an ironic twist of fate, favorite Senegal were beaten by Group A third place finishers, Cote d'Ivoire, as well as Morocco, who were beaten by South Africa in the round of 16. For Nigeria, it was a night to celebrate in their African Nations Cup round of 16 match against Cameroon. The Super Eagles beat the Indomitable Lions in a pulsating match that was a tactical masterclass of good defending and some good opportunistic attacking football. Jose Posero must be given credit for getting his strategy right once again. But are the Super Eagles playing the best it can, and can we now say that they are well placed to win the tournament? Let's get into it. In the second match of the African Nations Cup round of 16, the Super Eagles got an emphatic 2-0 win against the Indomitable Lions who we expected would give more of a fight. The euphoria that has followed this win has been intense as expected. It was a celebration that made up for Nigeria's disappointment at not qualifying for the 2022 World Cup and crashing out at this stage at the 2021 African Nations Cup. Nigerians have once again been reunited under the shared joy of victory, and that has as usual helped Nigerians forget many of the issues they presently face, such as the high fuel prices and high cost of living. In all this euphoria, some Nigerians have gone to extremes in their celebration by trolling their West African neighbors like Ghana and Cameroon after their victory over their national teams. Against Cameroon, some feel well justified as there are question marks regarding the challenge by a Cameroon player that led to the injury of Nigerian keeper Stanley Nwabali in the match. In that match against Cameroon, a much better challenge was expected from Cameroon on the pitch. However, what Nigeria got was a disappointing contest, as the indomitable Lions were satisfied with knocking the ball around, but ran out of ideas advancing towards goal. Although the Super Eagles played a very compact game giving little room for the indomitable Lions to make a direct shot at goal or score a goal, the Lions were mostly clueless lacking creativity or invention in the final third. In the resultant frustration, it seemed like the Lions were targeting the keeper as they kept going for unguarded challenges against the Nigerian keeper, one of which led to his injury and replacement. At the end of the day, Nigeria showed more alertness in defense and invention going towards goal. One of the moments where the indomitable Lions lost concentration led to Nigeria's first official goal as it already had one goal disallowed for offside. In a moment of opportunistic brilliance by Victor Osimhen, he stole the ball off a Cameroon defender to create the first goal. Showing resilience and strength, he fended off the contest from the defender to lay a sublime pass to Adamola Lukman who shot past the Cameroonian goalkeeper. For the second goal, Calvin Bassi showed that his skills are not being maximized in central defense as he showed vision in his pass into the box advancing on the left side of the field. The pass perfectly found Adamola Lukman to score his second goal of the match. Strategically, Jose Posero played the same 3-4-3 formation that worked against Cote d'Ivoire. That system seems to have worked in the matches so far against strong opponents like Cote d'Ivoire and Cameroon, and we assume that Posero will fancy using this formation through the rest of the competition. Looking at this strategy from an opposing viewpoint, this allowed the Indomitable Lions more possession as the Super Eagles were doing more defending and attacking, but had less ball possession in central midfield. As Nigeria advances to meet stronger teams in the competition, it will be wise for Posero to stay flexible and maybe explore the 3-5-2 formation possibly in the earlier stages of a match by deploying two defensive midfielders, allowing Iwobi to move further up front to feed Victor Osimhen and a support striker. When the need arises, Nigeria can fall back to the 3-4-3 formation, preferably in the second half, when the opponent has tired out. Bringing on Lukman on the left and pushing the support striker to the right, preferably Kelechi Iheanacho or Tara Mafi. This would give the Super Eagles an added dimension of flexibility and unpredictability. Moses Simon has done okay on the right wing when he has played, but he has not been effective as he can be on the left. Chukwuezi continues to show his inconsistency when he plays, and this is probably the reason for his time on the bench. In as much as you don't change a winning team, it is very obvious where the Super Eagles has a few question marks, and so options may need to be explored in these areas. The left fullback marshaled by Zaidu Sanusi and the right wing position seem to be the most suboptimal positions in the team, and the coach should probably look at optimizing these positions. To be able to go all the way, Nigeria will need to be firing on all cylinders. 
Zaidu Sanusi has been adequate defending in this nation's cup, but moving up front his forays have left much to be desired. He has missed quite a few scoring chances and been unable to deliver any decisive pass or cross into the 18-yard box that could lead to a goal. On the right side of attack, in the absence of a more effective winger, Kalechi Iheanacho may have to be considered as an option. In a 3-5-2 formation, he could pair up with Victor Osimhen, and when the team switches to the 3-4-3, he can drift to the right side of attack. Moses Simon obviously brings some defensive dimension to the game by being good at tracking back, so this is possibly the reason Posero prefers him to Kelechi Iheanacho. However, we believe what Kelechi Iheanacho brings to the game cannot be ignored, and he should get a chance to play sometime during the tournament. The same can be said for Terra Mafi, as although he doesn't track back as much as Victor Osimhen, he is an equally competent goal scorer, and his strength up front could be an asset. In the forthcoming match against the Palancas Negras of Angola, Nigeria must be more vigilant than they were against Cameroon as Angola is a better attacking side. Whatever formation Posero deploys against Angola, he must prepare for players like Gelson Dalla, who is a real threat illustrated by his four goals in the tournament for Angola. Angola is one country that has benefited from continuity, as the Angolan coach, Pedro Goncalves, of Portuguese origin has been working in Angola for over eight years. He took the Angolan under-17 team to the Junior World Cup in 2018 and led them to the last 16. Three of those players are in the present Palancas Negras team. Nigeria cannot make any silly mistakes at the back against Angola, as they will be punished for any such mistake. We hope the goalkeeper Stanley Nwabali gets back to match fitness and will be ready for the quarter-final encounter. If Nigeria gets through Angola, then it should fancy its chances of winning the African Nations Cup based on the results so far. As it is presently, every other team at this stage of the competition is a threat and so should be taken equally seriously. The quality at the 2024 African Nations Cup has been amazing with lesser ranked teams pulling surprises after surprises throughout the tournament so far. This gives a lot of hope for African football, especially that Africa is closer to producing a team that can win the World Cup. With a lot of players who grew up in the diaspora now coming back to play for their homeland, the level of intelligence and technical discipline is generally higher than in previous tournaments. This makes it a very open tournament and so any team that wants it enough and takes its chances would probably be the team that wins it all. The exit of Senegal and Morocco in the round of 16 is further proof that any team can lose if they don't bring their A game. Senegal and Morocco wasted many chances to put their games away in their match against Cote d'Ivoire and South Africa respectively. As the Super Eagles take on the Palancas Negras in the quarterfinals, we hope they stay on their A game and take their chances when they come. We wish them all the best in the next round of matches. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, we'll appreciate if you leave a comment. Please let us know what you think about the formation we have recommended, or whether you think the coach should stick to his present formation and selection of players. See you in the next video.